All right, IED. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be creating the grip part of the uh, front cap of the pin. And I think there's a couple of quick, easy ways that we can make this work in Onshape that other 3D programs don't necessarily use. Um, generally, the design flow is to create a sketch and then do something to that sketch. Uh, however, in this case, since we already have a part that is made, we can use Onshape's ability to extrude off of its uh, previously generated parts uh, to our advantage in this case. And I think that's what we're going to end up doing. Uh, so for starters, I'm going to click the extrude button. I'm not going to make a sketch first. I'm just going to click the extrude button. I'm going to make sure that it says new for a new solid. And I'm just going to click on this ring. And whenever you click on this ring, it's going to make a new solid. Or make sure that it goes, see how whenever I clicked on it, it went to add. Make sure you go back to new and you'll see that it creates a new part down there. So this is going to create an entirely new part. And I can just go to the front view and click this arrow and kind of drag it down to where it gets into the right spot. We can use the dimensions from uh, our design last time to get it just right. I, if I remember correctly, I think it was 0.8 inches. Yeah, so we're going to type in here 0 0.8 inches. And then I'm going to go over to the little checkbox that says draft. And if you click on that, it's going to make it go a little bit wider. If you click the opposite direction button, uh, you can change the amount of degree of angle that it goes into. I'm going to just change it to uh, 1.5 degrees. And see how it kind of gives you this slight little uh, indentation downward. Maybe let's go a little bit more. How about 1.6? 1.7? Mm, how about 2? Yeah, let's go with two. I think that looks about right. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and I'm going to click the uh, green check mark, and then we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and color this a different uh, color so that we can actually see it. Um, so I believe if we go to right-click on the part and go to Edit Appearance, we should be able to change it. I don't know. I like green. Let's do green. Click the green check mark, and then we're good to go on that part. Um, now, one thing that we do need to notice is double check and make sure that whenever you did this, that if you hide part one, make sure that you can actually get this uh, thickness point out. This automatically, like doing it this way, automatically hollowed out the inside, so we didn't even have to use the shell command for that, which was like super helpful. Um, so it kind of makes our life a little bit easier, and I'm all about making our life easier if we can afford to do it. All right, so the next part that we need to do is we've got this like um, these little indent indentions on the uh, outside of the pin, and they're in the shape of an oval. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to create a sketch, and we're going to have to kind of imprint that sketch onto the surface itself. So uh, I don't do this one very often, so hopefully I'll do it in the right steps. So we're going to click on the uh, plane tool because we're going to need to be able to write on a surface. If you just like click create sketch and you try to put it on a curved surface, um, it's going to be like, nah, bro, we can't do that. Uh, so I'm going to click on the front plane. And the distance here doesn't really matter. I'm just going to leave it at the default one inches uh, because we're going to take that sketch and we're going to project it on to the surface itself. So I'm going to click the green check mark. Notice you've got two planes here. There's a front plane, and then there's a plane one. So we're going to use that. I'm going to go to the front view. Actually, hang on. Let me go back. I'm going to click the sketch, and then I'm going to click plane one. Then I'm going to go to the front view, like that. All right, so we should kind of measure uh, what the major and the minor axis are on the ellipse. So if you haven't done that yet, you might want to. Um, let's see here. I'm going to just create this sketch and we'll start it like right here. And I'll make a oval. Now, notice whenever you move the mouse, it kind of stretches. You want the long part to be this direction. And notice you have no real control over the height yet. So whenever you click, it's going to give you both axes. So the second time, then you'll click again. Okay, and then we can hard type in these numbers. So the one uh, that goes this way, what, about 0.7, so that's good, 0.7, enter. Uh, and then the next one is 0.4, enter. Oh, I lied to you. I think that might have accidentally been double. Let's do 0.2.
here we go. All right, so 0.7 going this way across, and then 0.2 going across this way. Um, and then what we're going to do is, I think that looks good, but I think one last thing is, I don't think this is entirely centered. So what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to create a dimension. So I'm going to click on the dimension button, and I'm going to go from here to here, and I want that to be half of 0.8, so I want that to be 0 0.4. It was close, but it wasn't exactly where I wanted it to be. So that'll put it in place uh, so that we actually have uh, it evenly spaced across the entire grippy part of the pin. So I'm going to click the green check mark, and what you're going to have is you're going to have this sketch. It's kind of floating above the surface itself. So now we're going to actually take this, and we're going to use it to extrude onto the surface. So we're going to click Extrude. And this is where interesting things happen. So we're going to make sure that we go over to Remove. And there are several different options inside Remove. So we're going to move this down to Up to Face. So we're going to be extruding up to this face. We're going to be removing at this part. Uh, the offset distance is going to be, I think, 0.02-ish, give or take. Uh, and then the face we need to select. And that face is going to be... Um, let's see here, off of this one, I think, up to face, faces, uh, and sketch, oh, yeah, we're going to extrude this, there we go, and then now we can select the face, so that face that we're going to extrude it on is going to be, um, click part two. Up to face. Will you let me do it now? <gasps> yes, okay. So sometimes you have to kind of finagle with it a little bit. So, you know, you're going to click the face of sketch 2 up here, and then you're going to try to get it to select the face of extrude 1 uh, right over here. Okay. And then I think we're going to have to flip this direction. Yep, there we go. Ooh, I cut in a little bit too deep. So, um, why don't I move this back a little bit? So instead of being an offset distance of 0 0.02, why don't I make it 0.01? There we go. Okay, so now we just have a little bit. We don't want it to, to clip inside there. All right, so now we're going to click the green check mark, and you should have an indention that goes in like that. Uh, last part's going to be pretty easy. So let's go to the... I wish I had a home view. There we go. Nope. Front, top. Just trying to get this where I want it. All right. Um, let's see. Now, I want to get this to have six different uh, indentions all the way across. So we're going to use the circular pattern tool. So I'm going to click circular pattern. And I want to make sure that I want to create a new, it's based off of the features, it's not based off of uh, an individual part. We're actually going to just do this feature. So move your mouse in and click on this bottom divot down here. And the axis of the pattern is going to be any one of the circles that's going around in this revolve. So I'm going to just click on this top part of the circle. Okay, you're going to start to see these uh, ex uh, extra features go around. We're going to change the instance count to six, hit enter. And you should see six of them around on the outside. All right. Uh, looks good to me. So I'm going to click the green check mark. And we are pretty much good to go. So there we go. Now we have a uh, grippy part to our carabiner pin. And I believe that's pretty much all we need to do for that one. So once again, there are many ways to do it. But there's always a better way. I'm sure somebody can be like, well... It shouldn't, couldn't you have just done it this way? And the answer is, yeah, probably I could have. Uh, but that's this way how to do it. Um, and hope it helped. And you guys have a great day, and we'll talk later.